Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we will solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 77. Turn to it, make sure the book is in front of you, turn to page 77. The very first problem that we see there is 97. After having watched this video, if you find this useful and if you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can reach me at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Just send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Let's take a look at what Let's take a look at number 97. Let's see what, what it says. So 97 says that we have we have 50 dancers. 50 dancers split up into two groups. Group A and group B. It says the costumes costumes cost costumes cost $80 each for group A and $90 each for group B. We are further told that the total cost we are further told that the total cost of the costumes for the entire group for all the 50 people is $4,270. The question simply is what's the cost of the costume for group B? What's the cost of the costume for group B? Let's find out, shall we? Let's set it up. So we have 50 people all together, and since we are interested, since we are interested in group B, let's solve for B. Let's call let's call the number of people in group B. Number of people in group B, we're just gonna call it B. So we have nine, and each of those persons cost him post $90, so we have 90 times B. And once we take away, once we take away B number of people from the 50, what we are left with is 50 times B. And the reason we're solving for B is because we're just interested in how much, how much the costume cost for group B. If we solve for A, then we're going to have to remember to subtract whatever answer we get. We're going to have to remember to remember, subtract that from 50. And if we forget to do that, then, then, then you're done. So 50 minus B, if there are B number of people, and each of these people, their costume costs $80. And altogether, it has to be 4270 4, Let's see what we can do here. Well, the very first thing we should do here before we do anything else is to simply see this is a multiple of 10, this is a multiple of this is a multiple. Let's divide the entire equation by 10. Let's just keep it simple. So now we have 4 and 27 equals 50 times 8, uh, 100 times 8 is 800, so this is 400. 400 minus 8b plus 9b. There, there you go. 9b and 8b. This is very simple. 9b and 8b is just a b. Subtract 400 from both sides and we are done. B is 27 and B is 27 and each of their costume cost $90 so the total cost that we're looking for is simply 90 times 27 90 times 27 we know we know 100 times 27 100 times 27 we know is 2700 we do not have 100 27s we have only 90 27s so 90 times 27 is just going to be 2700 minus 270 in other words, take take 127 and subtract 10 27 from it, and that will give us the 90 27 that we're looking for. There you go. So that's a zero. That's a three. Six minus four. Six minus two is four. There you go. Looks like the total cost that we're looking for is 2,430. Number 98. Number 98. Number 98 says that 18 cubic centimeter of drug was prescribed was prescribed was prescribed for a 120 pound person. For a 125 person, a drug was prescribed in the amount of 18 cubic centimeter. They're going to tell us that the typical Typical normal dosage is two cubic centimeter 
per 15 pound per 15 pound that's the typical normal dosage you're supposed to give them two cubic centimeter every 15 pound of weight the question simply is question simply is by what percentage was the dosage greater what by what percentage was the dose greater compared to typ typical dosage let's find out shall we so the first thing we need to find out here is how much we should have given the person how much should should the patient have been given before and then before we worry about uh, the amount that we gave to the patient was what percentage greater than what, what, what we should have given. We first have to find out what we should have given. Let's find out, shall we? Set it up with a proportion problem, simple proportion problem, cubic centimeter over, over, over the weight. And we are told that for it should be two cubic centimeter for every 15 pound. This is measured in pound. And we, we have a person who, who weighs 120 pounds. 120 pounds, question is how much is that? Let's find out, shall we? It's very straightforward. X is simply 2, two times to 120 divided by 15. X is simply 2 times 120 divided by 15. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. Uh, top and bottom by 3. Uh, 15 has 5 threes. 12 has 4 threes. There you go. Let's divide one more time. Top and bottom by 5. And we have 8 here. 8 times 2 is 16. So it looks like this looks like this patient should have been given 16 cubic centimeter of the drug but instead of 16 cubic centimeter the patient was given 18 cubic centimeter in other words in other words the patient was given two cubic centimeter more than what he should have been given or what what she should have been given two as a percentage of 16 because 16 is what the person should have been should have been given there you go it's very simple two over 16 this is, this is the difference between what, what we gave the person and what the person should have gotten and this is the, again what the person should have gotten as a percentage. 2 over 16 is very simple, it's 1 over 8. We know, we know 1 quarter is 25%. Everybody knows that 1 quarter is 25%. 1 eighth is half of 1 quarter, therefore it is simply 12.5%. And I hope And I hope that something basic like that you know by heart. I, sh I shouldn't have to write it out like that, uh, explaining like a, like I would explain to a child that one quarter is 25 percent, therefore one eighth should be 12 and a half percent. This basic thing you should know. Number 99. Number 99. In number 99, we have a function that we are given f of x. And we are told it is equal to square root of x minus 10. And typically, traditionally, we express that as y equal to f of x. y being the dependent variable, x being the independent variable, and we are told y is a function of x. This is how we typically write it. They, didn't, they leave it out, but that's okay. That's what, that's what it is. The question is, if, if u equals f of t, if u equals f of t, what is, what is t? in terms of u. Very simple, very straightforward problem. So in other words what they're saying is that instead of expressing terms and text instead of expressing the instead of expressing the function in terms of x and y, they want us they want us to rewrite the function in terms of t and u. So that's what we're gonna do. Wherever we see x in the function we're gonna simply replace it with t. That's what it is. Wherever we see x we replace it with t and now what we have is u is equal to square root of t minus 10 and they want us to write this equation what is t in terms of t they want us to write this equation uh, where t becomes t is expressed in terms of u so let's solve this equation for t that's what it is if we solve this equation for t bring the 10 to the other side which means square root of t, t will become u plus 10 and therefore t is simply u plus 10 whole squared and that's all there is that's all there is. Number 100. Number 100 says rectangle 
A, B, C, D is inscribed in a circle. What's the area of the circle? Or rather, not in a circle, not just in your circle, but the circle that they're giving us, in the circle, the circle that they gave us. Here's, here's the circle, and inside the circle, we are told a uh, rectangle is inscribed. So let's, let's draw a re uh, rectangle as best as we can. And because it's a rectangle, all the angles are 90 degrees. Obviously, we shouldn't have be, we, nobody should have to tell us that. It's a rectangle, all the, all the angles are 90 degrees. So we are further told that this side is 5 from here to here and we are told that this side from here to here is 12. Let's see what we can do. Since we are looking for the area of the circle and we know area equals to pi r squared, if we can somehow figure out the radius of the circle, we are home free. And that is very easy to do here because, again, we should know that when we have a, when we have a rectangle inscribed in a circle, when we have a rectangle inscribed in a circle, listen carefully, in that case, if you were to draw a diagonal, if you were to draw a diagonal, that diagonal goes through the center of the circle. That diagonal of the rectangle will go through the center of the circle. In other words, this distance here is the diameter of the circle. Question is, can we find the distance? Answer of course is yes. It's a simple, it's a simple right angle triangle, and I hope you are I hope that you're able to recognize right away that it is a simple 5, 12, 13 right angle triangle. 5, 12, 13. 5, 12, 13. There are two kinds of triangles that appear on the exam all the time. One, one is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. One is a 3, 4, 5 triangle and the other one is 5, 12, 13. This happens to be obviously 5, 12, 13. Now, if you are unable to see that right away, if you are unable to see that this, this diameter is 13, if you are unable to see that right away, it's not a big deal. Just find it out, just calculate it, it's very simple. It's simply 5 squared plus 12 squared 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, 25 plus 144 you will see is exactly 169 and that happens to be 13 squared. That's all. In other words, this diameter is 13 squared, uh, th this diameter is 13, therefore this radius, this radius here is 6.5. Because we just found out that the, ra that the diameter is 13. Let's put that in here, that's all we're done. We simply substitute r equals to 6.5 and, and solve it. So area is going to be pi r squared, which is uh, six and a half, as we just said. As we just said, six and a half squared. And let's find out what six, six and six and a half times six and a half is. Where can we do it? Let's do it right here. Or better yet, let's do it right here. Six and a half times six and a half. Okay, are you with me? Let's begin. Okay, pay attention. Six times six is thirty-six. 6 times half, half of 6 is 3, half of 6 is 3 again, and half times half is a quarter. 36 plus 6, 36 plus 4 is, 36 plus 4 would have been 40, so it is, it looks like it is 42 and a half, 42 and a quarter rather, 42 and a quarter times pi. The area of the circle is 42 and a quarter pi, unit squared, whatever the unit is, unit squared. That's all. That was number 100. That was number 100. And I'm looking at number 100 and I don't see, I don't see that answer that we just came up with. 42 and a quarter. Oh yes, 42 and a quarter is answer choice B. Answer choice B is in boy. Let's move on. 101. One hundred and one. In one hundred and one, we have a quadrilateral. In quadrilateral A, B, C, D. The question is, how much is length A, B? How much is length A, B? Let's throw. Let's throw the quadrilateral. It looks something like this. And we are told that this is right angle, and we are told that this is right angle. This A, B, C, D. In this quadrilateral, we are told the side AD is 1, 
this is 3 and this is 4. The question is, how long is A to B? This side right here, how long is A to B? This is what we want to find out. Let's find out very quickly. Well, what we're going to do is, we're going to divide this thing into two triangles. We're going to divide this into two triangles. Why? Because by doing so, by doing so, we will have two nice right angle triangles. Even though that does not look like a right angle, because I did not do a very good job of drawing it. If you look at the book, it's drawn better, obviously. It is a right angle triangle. Not only it is a right angle triangle, but it's a very straightforward triangle that we just talked about. It's a 3, 4, and therefore this hypotenuse facing the right angle is 5. Three, four. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Once we get to this one, if this side is 1 and this side is 5, we simply have to figure out what this side is. The 5 is the hypotenuse because it's facing the right angle. So it's simply 5 squared equals x squared plus 1 squared. There we go. And therefore x squared is simply going to be 25 minus 1, which is 24. And x is going to be 24 is, uh, 24 is 4 times 4 times 6. It's 4 times 6. We're looking for square root of 4 times 6. So it's simply going to be 2 square root of 6. That's it. That was 101. Let's do the very last problem on the page. 102. It helps to have the book in front of you because then you can follow the thing very easily. It says three quarter of the area that is 30 by 40 is to be is to be enclosed. We have two choices. We have two choices. One is that we can either have we can either have a uh, full width and reduced length. Full width. So we can write full width as width with subscript f, or re and reduce re reduce length. We can write that as l with subscript r. So that's one choice. The other choice is the other way around. We can have the reduced width and the full length. Those are the two choices we have here. And what, our, what we want to do is we have a lawn, we have a lawn that looks something like this. It's a 30 by 40 right here. It's 30 by 40. This is 40 and this is 30. And we want to fence it. We want to put a fence around it. We want to put a fence around it and we are deciding how we should put a fence around it. Should I put a fence around it like this? Fence this area, fence this area, or should I put a fence around, or should I put a fence around like this? In other words, in other words, keep the full, keep the full length, keep the full length, and reduce the width, reduce the width, or should I keep the full width, keep the full width, and reduce the length? Uh, reduce, reduce the length. Which way should I go? And the choice that I'm going to pick is the one that requires less fence. Because why should I spend the money on buying an extra fence if I can just get away with what I want to achieve? What I want to achieve is, my goal is very simple. I just want three quarter of this area to be fenced. Three quarter of this area. So let's do it out. Let's do it out, shall we? We can erase this part so we can work, work here. Three quarter of this area that we want here, three quarter of 30 by 40, three quarter of 30 by 40, I hope that you're able to see that this 4 goes into 40 10 times exactly. So it's 10 times 3, 3 times 10 is 30, it's 30 by 30. So by the time, by the time we reduce the, by the time we reduce the length, 40 was the length here, by the time we reduce the length and make it a, because we want 3 quarter of this area, 3 quarter of this area turns out to be 900 square feet. And by the time we do that, what we'll end up, what we'll end up actually enclosing is a square, a 30 by 30 square, which is this. We want to reduce the length right here. It's just a 30 by 30. This is what we will end up with. Are you with me? Let's find out what's going to happen here. If we want to do the same thing, we want the 3 quarter of this area. 3 quarter of this area, which is 30 by 40. But this time we're not going to do anything with the length. We're going to work with the width. And such, such that we want 3 quarter of this thing. Okay, stay with me. We can't touch the 40. 40 is the length. We're not, we don't want to touch the 40. We want to keep the length the same. The length has to be full. 
we're going to reduce the width. Let's find out. So 4 goes into 13, 15 times, and that's a 2. And that's all we can do. That's all we can do. So what we'll end up here is 3 times 15 is 45. It's 45 over 2 times 40. That is going to be our new enclosed area. New enclosed area. Let's put it up here. What we'll end up enclosing is 45 over 2 times 40. In other words, in other words, our length will remain the same as before, original length, full length, but our width will be reduced from 30 to 22 and a half, 40 over 2. This is 22 and a half. But don't write it like this. Just leave it like that. We'll see in a second that uh, we don't have to waste our time doing it out. Because all we want to figure out, all we want to figure out is how much fence we need. How much fence we need to enclose this area. And in order to find out how much fence we need to enclose our uh, enclose our desired loan, desired area of the loan rather, three quarter of my loan, I need to figure out the perimeter. We need to figure out the perimeter in this case and perimeter in this case and just go with the one that is lower. And the question is how much lower is it? How many how many feet few how many fewer feet would I have to buy in this scenario versus that scenario? Let's find out. This is very simple. The perimeter is here simply a uh, parameter as we all know, length times width times 2, that's all we, uh, we know that. The parameter here is simply 2 times 30 plus 30, 30 plus 30 is 120, 30 plus 30 is 60, it is just 120. That's very straight. I, if I go this route, I would end up buying 120 feet of fence. Let's see what we have here. The perimeter here is going to be 2 times length, which is 45 over uh, width, rather, plus the, the length. You see, this is the length, this is the width. Which is why we did not bother with this thing, because you see by the time we open the parenthesis, these two, these two are going to go away. So the perimeter in this case is simply going to be 45, because this two is going to cancel out with that two, plus 2 times 40, which is 80, which gives us 125 feet. So the question was, again, which is why I keep repeating like a parrot every single time that you must have the book in front of you. The question simply was, how much less fence will be needed? How much fe less fence will be needed? The answer is we're going to have to buy 5 feet less in this scenario. If you go with that scenario, we'll end up having to purchase 125 feet. Here we'll have to buy only 120 feet. We'll save money on 5 feet of land, 5 feet of fence. That was the end of that page. That was our last question on that page. That's where we're going to stop. We'll meet again tomorrow, obviously, and we'll pick up uh, from where we left off yesterday on data sufficiency problems. All right. If you want to get hold of me, if you wish to get hold of me, if you wish to talk to me, send me an email at kashwaniprep at iCloud.com. All right. Bye now.